It's not fully understood why catfish fillet colors vary so much, or why some have more yellow than others. With support from the catfish industry, the United Soybean Board, and the Soybean Checkoff Fund, researchers at Auburn University are looking into ways that the coloration can be evaluated and quantified. They are also interested in what causes the yellow coloration and steps that can be taken at the farm level to avoid it. But those are longer term projects and will be addressed at another time. Color is an important aspect of any food product. People have certain expectations about how a particular food item should look. If I asked you to close your eyes and imagine an apple, which of these is closer to what you imagine? I would expect that most people would say the apple on the left. Which do you think is more appetizing? How about these two apples? They both look good, but which one is better? Which one would you choose? These happen to be different types of apples, but if you took the skin off, then how would you choose? These same color conundrums exist for all types of food. A lot of work has gone into the evaluation of flesh color in the salmon industry. The Hoffman LaRoche company even developed the Salmo Fan color grading scale to help buyers choose salmon fillets. Buyers generally associate the darker orange color with higher quality. You can hold the color chart next to the salmon fillet and determine the average color. Fortunately, the flesh color is fairly uniform across the fillet, making it easier to see, quote, an average color. Some salmon processing plants even have automated color sorting equipment that can put the fish into different color categories. Catfish fillets, however, often do not have a uniform color across the fillet. Consumers who are used to seeing fish fillets with a uniform color may be confused about which catfish color is best. Right now, there are no catfish fillet color standards in place, and no optimum or color grades have been established. There are several steps involved in the development of color standards. The first is to identify methods to evaluate fillet color. Next is to standardize the measurement procedures. That way, the work can be replicated by others. In the short term, Creating color categories will allow processors to hand sort fillets. In this scenario, the color extremes would be separated so that when they reach the grocery counter, the colors would be more uniform. In the long term, the procedure will provide a numerical database of average colors that can be used to train machine vision equipment. Color is measured by a variety of methods. Regardless of the method employed, there are three components necessary to see and evaluate color. A light source, an object, and an observer. Light sources vary in color and objects will appear differently under different lighting conditions. Our brains have adapted to do this automatically, but mechanical devices like cameras must be told how to measure the light. Almost everyone has seen a photograph taken under fluorescent lights where people's skin has a greenish hue or by candlelight or firelight where things appear more yellow. A light's color or color temperature is expressed by a unit called Kelvin. The lower the Kelvin rating, the warmer or more yellow the light. The higher the rating, the cooler or more blue the light. In our case, the object of evaluation is the catfish fillet at the end of commercial filleting prior to any additional treatment. The three-dimensional shape, color variations, and the moisture sheen of the fillet may make color measurement more complex than another product like paint. To avoid hot spots or shine in the photos, the fillet must be evenly lit. The third component of any color evaluation is an observer. A person can be a very effective observer of color and able to distinguish between many shades and hues, but the problem with developing a color standard based on people is that different people will perceive colors differently and with varying sensitivity. We have chosen to use a camera and properly calibrated software as an unbiased, accurate, and consistent observer. This method has been in use for some time in the salmon industry. Our work started with a visit to one of the processing plants where we collected samples that represented the widest possible color spectrum. 
Next, the samples were visually inspected and placed into one of three categories based on the amount of yellow on the fillet. After reviewing the literature on flesh color measurement, we decided to compare a photospectrometer, the Minolta CR300 chromometer, with a technique using a digital camera. The chromometer head is placed on the sample in various locations. The measuring head of the chromometer contains a lamp that creates a diffuse, even lighting over an 8 mm diameter area. Only the light reflected perpendicular to the specimen surface area is collected by the optical fiber cable for color analysis. Six different sites across the fillet were measured to obtain and average LAB value. This works pretty well when the specimen is relatively uniform in color. But what happens if the sample color is variable? We needed to find a way to account for both amount and intensity of color. The chromometer only measures small areas, but a camera can cover the whole fillet at once. We set up a light cube softbox and two video spotlights to provide diffused, even lighting. The fillets were placed on a white cutting board and the camera was held approximately 46 inches above the fillet. The digital files were then transferred to a computer. Here is an uncorrected photo right from the camera. A color space is just a way of representing a color numerically. You may be more familiar with the RGB, red, green, blue color space, used on most computer monitors, or the CMYK color space used in printing. Because we were focused on measuring yellow in the fillets, we chose to use the LAB color space because the B value represents the yellow to blue component of a color. Looking at the diagram, you can see that the L value represents how light or dark the color is. The A value measures on a spectrum from green to red and the B value, the blue to yellow spectrum. We were hoping that we would not see any blue catfish fillets, and we didn't. Photographs of the same object taken with different cameras or under different lighting conditions may look very different. One method to standardize color rendition between devices is to use a device like the X-Rite Color Checker. This industry standard color checker card and software allows you to create digital profiles that can be applied to photos so that they provide a consistent color. This comparison shows how adjusting the white balance and using the color checker profile affects a photo. The final photo definitely looks the most like the fillet did in person. The next step was to extract just the actual fillet from the cutting board background. This was accomplished using Adobe Photoshop. Once the fillet was separated from the background, it was possible to determine the average color of the fillet using Photoshop's average blur feature. Here are the average color swatches from some of the fillet samples. If the samples were sorted according to the B value, we can generate a yellowness spectrum. The numbers below each swatch indicate the sample number and the LAB values. You can see that the last number in the group of three indicates the B or yellowness value and that those with the higher B values fall on the left side of the scale. You can see that it would be difficult to visually assign an average color to each of these fillets. But with the help of the digital camera, the X-Rite color checker, and Photoshop, this is what the catfish fan color rating scale might look like. Just as a point of interest, we removed the other colors from the photos and left just the yellow. Using this technique, we can see where the yellow color is located. The areas with the most yellow are on the dorsal top side of the fish and it is most intense in the head region of the fish. The meat in these areas is where the fat tends to accumulate in the flesh. After evaluating the numbers generated by both the spectrometer and the photo analysis technique, we were able to generate a photographic color category chart. In the first version, the examples for each category were selected based on the agreement of the numbers generated by the spectrometer and the photo analysis. By working with industry experts, we were able to refine the color categories. When we presented each individual with a group of 50 and asked them to place each photo into one of the categories, they agreed 92% of the time which fillets fell into category one and 88% overall. 
The Klein scale has been presented to several of the processing plants so that they can train their employees to separate the fillets. Separating the fillets by color is just one example of adding value to the fillets. When and if the processors decide to sort the fillets mechanically using machine vision systems, we will be able to provide an excellent data set to train the machine vision equipment and accelerate the process.